Good evening, guys, from a church on Bowieville Circle. We are so glad you chose to join us tonight. Yes. John and I, I think both are off our meds right now. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even have any. <laughs> I'm fired up to be here. Sean's fired up to be here. He's he's uh, got his voice back, his vocal strain. It ain't no better. I just can sing louder now. That's right. That's right. And... Uh, there's a lot of people going through a lot of tough stuff. So people that's really close to us and all throughout the world going through coronavirus, going through loss of loved ones, going through um, the loss of jobs, all kinds of really, really hard stuff on a lot of people all at one time. But we got an awesome God. That's one thing we can lean on no matter what. He's in control. And y'all can sing this with us. We may mess it up. We haven't played it in a while, so we're going to play it. But y'all sing it. Fill the airwaves. Fill the algorithms and everything else with, with music, with your voices. Let's sing it to the Lord. When he rose up his sleeves, the angels putting on the wrist. Our God is an awesome God. He's lying in his footsteps and thunder in his feet. Our God is an awesome God. The Lord wasn't choking when he kicked him out of Eden. Was it for no reason that he shed his blood? His return is very soon, so you better be believing. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God, Our God is an awesome God. He reigns, he reigns from heaven above with Stars in the void of the night. Our God is an awesome God. He spoke into the darkness and created the light. Our God is an awesome God. Judgment and wrath He poured out on sight. Mercy and grace He showed us at the cross. I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten. Our God is an awesome God. Our God, our God is an awesome God. He reigns, he reigns from heaven above with, with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God, our God is an awesome God. 
count on you all the time. I might also mention that Brad is here and he'll be speaking in just a little while, but right now he's helping to record and trying to make sure they get watered down. Got to keep them <coughs> moist. Uh, again, it is good to see you and thank you for being here. Uh, we appreciate you joining in with us and we do have quite a few things to uh, mention. Basically, we'll be when we think about our church calendar, normally we do lots of things. And so I spend quite a bit of time, more time than I want to, saying we have this and that and the other and, and several <coughs> things every week. And uh, But now we basically say, hey, everything is canceled. Yes. But it's not quite all canceled. But let me mention a thing or two. One is we'll have church again Wednesday night. We'll have uh, singing and preaching. And uh, so anyway, I hope that you can be a part of that. Also, on Easter, we'll have the regular 930 service, and then we will have drive-up church probably at 6 o'clock. Uh, we'll be trying to put out some more stuff about that between now and next Sunday. But I've noticed that one of the things really has surprised me how much a lot of people really want to get together with church friends. It's just really been amazing how much that takes place. I was actually at another church this morning, and somebody said to me that I'd mentioned how it's so obvious that people just long to be together so that they can be near friends again. And uh, somebody said, yeah, we need to put that in writing or get it on the tape so that whenever we're able to come back again, they will be able to uh, hold it against them, I guess, if they don't show up. <clears throat> but still, we have uh, uh, a great blessing, and uh, even if we do the drive-up church, there's still some restrictions. The governor's mandate has some restrictions about it. You have to uh, park the cars about six feet apart, and people can't get out of their cars, and we can't take up an offering, those kind of things. <clears throat> Nobody going from car to car with any of that kind of stuff. But uh, again... We want to try to do something that will help you feel a little bit more uh, included in uh, church life. I uh, might uh, mention as well that the young adults have been talking about trying to do something to show uh, love and connection with uh, the family of Lisa Hendricks. Uh, in particular, since Jake and Leslie are part of their Sunday school class, uh, they wanted to do something like at least a drive-by at a certain time where they could uh, at least let them know that the rest of the group is thinking about them, praying for them, and in some degree hurting with them uh, about the loss that they are suffering. And I understand through Grapevine today that some of the older people are also wanting to take part in that. So... Uh, I'm sure that they will connect with you through the week about, uh, you know, maybe even tomorrow about a time when that would be viable. So uh, in the messages, uh, you can also look at it on Facebook and this kind of thing. Just make sure that you try to stay uh, up to date with those kind of posts and any kind of messages you have on your phone. Uh, also, uh, the funeral... Uh, for Lisa is tomorrow, and I know that lots of you have been crying along with the family and have been praying for the family and want to do something, uh, like the young adults wanted to do the drive-by. And so uh, sometimes the thing that churches do is just provide food. That's a southern way and a real Christian way of saying, we love you, here's some food. And uh, again, because of all the restrictions that we have, we're doing it differently 
And uh, I know that Linda and Jenny Sumrall and Sylvia are kind of hitting this up and uh, connecting with the family and they're ordering things and taking things. And if you would like to participate in that, about the only way to do it is to just, uh, when they tally the whole bill, we can say, hey, this is how much it cost and people can each give a little bit toward it so everybody can participate in the meal. And uh, we know that you want to do that and we're just trying to make that available to you. Uh, we do have a large prayer list. Uh, I read it to you this morning. I won't read the whole list to you again right now, but I would like to uh, say again that uh, if you will hold up these people that I talked about and uh, some of you, uh, so many of our church members have some of these on this list right in your own home. And so it, it's not like you're going to be uh, without thinking about them. But we have a large list of people who have real needs, but in particular right now with the grief that uh, the Hendricks family have, we want to remember all of them and uh, do especially pray for them tomorrow because the funeral is taking place, uh, government restrictions are just so that 10 people will be at one of those. And even though there may be just a few more, it, it's not like normal whenever a funeral takes place and you can lean on and hug one another and get strength from the friends that are around. But again, we do want to pray for these and others. Would you bow with me as we pray together? Oh Lord, we come to you and we thank you for your many blessings. We ask especially that you would be with Charles and all of the family. We ask your blessings upon each one. We know that it's tough. No mother like Julie could lose a child without it just tearing her heart apart. Uh, a son uh, like Jake and Jason, uh, they have such a tough time. Brothers and sisters like uh, <coughs> uh, Jenny and Neil will have such a, a difficult time with it as well. And, and others, I know Brooke and, and, and many, many other people really, really close to Lisa. And so I ask that you would buoy them up, bless them, help them, and may they find what it is to lean on you and find real help during this time of trouble. We thank you again that you're with us. We ask your blessings upon all of the church body and all the people on our prayer list. We pray that you'd be with the the uh, many people who have the virus and that you would bless people who are working to help us through it. And we ask again that you would just be merciful in ways beyond anything that we could ask or think. Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for these who lead us. In Jesus' name, amen. Besides John and Sean leading us in music tonight, uh, Brad will be bringing a message from God's Word in just a little bit, and I look forward to that. Uh, Brad has been uh, such a big help to us, and uh, I know that he and Sean have a thing called, what is it, Big Dudes? Big Dude Approved. Big Dude Approved, yeah. <clears throat> but I, I noticed uh, that uh, the other John's pretty close to being as big a dude as y'all are, so. <laughs> so uh, Honorary <laughs> Big Dude. Yeah, <clears throat> and, and I'm 200 pounds, I don't know if that makes me a big dude or not, but I, uh, I'm thankful again for these, uh, for their uh, desire to do things for the Lord and the church and to just make uh, life better and more fun for a whole lot of us. May God bless you. Uh, so, let's sing. Uh, just a, hold on. Just a word, what Dr. Greg was talking about with the driving past the house. We're, we're trying to figure out the logistics. I think right after church tonight, Brad, John, and I are going to sit down and talk logistics and figure it out. Um, pay attention to the Facebook page, uh, Miss Kathy's text messages, and if you haven't heard anything by the end of tonight or in the morning, please message somebody so that you know, because we just, we can't make contact or we can't stop by, but we figure maybe we can at least just, you know, form a, a long line and drive past the house and they can see, you know, how many people. Write some messages on the cars with the shoe polish. I mean, you can do that. On the you windows. Like. You can do that if you like. Nice. So, but just be on the lookout for a message uh, from this page, a text message from Emily, from Miss Kathy, 
because uh, we just want to organize that. We got to figure out how, but um, that'll be coming hopefully tonight. Um, and but, if anybody does not get a message from Emily and Kathy, mm -hmm. and they want to get these messages that go out to the church, just make sure that they connect with me or one of them so that they can get that message. Yes, Miss Kathy and Emily send out. Miss Kathy's very good about sending out prayer requests for the church. And Emily sends out a lot of uh, announcements and information. If you don't receive those, please let anybody in leadership know, Dottie Granger, Brad, Emily, Miss Kathy, me, John Jr., and we'll make sure that the numbers get passed around so that everybody's getting that information. But specifically, the, the, the parade type thing um, should be have information coming out hopefully shortly after church tonight, if not first thing in the morning. Because um, I think we're thinking tomorrow may be the best time to do it. So, but anyways. Looked out from a broken sky, traced out by the city lights. My world from a mile high, best seat in the house tonight. Touch down on the cold black tide, hold on for the sudden stop. Breathing the familiar shock of confusion, the chaos of all those people going somewhere. Why have I never cared? Give me your eyes for just one second. Give me your eyes so I can see everything that I keep missing. Give me your love for humanity. Give me your arms for the broken heart. The ones that are far beyond my reach Give me your heart for the ones forgotten Give me your eyes so I can see Yeah, 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 yeah Step out on a busy street See a girl in our eyes meet Does her best to smile at me To hide what's underneath there's a man just to her right, black suit and a bright red tie. Too ashamed to tell his wife he's out of work, he's buying time. How those people go away from somewhere? Why have I never cared? Give me your eyes for well, just one second. Give me your eyes so I can see everything that I keep missing. Give me your love for humanity. Give me your arms for the broken hearted, the ones that are far beyond my reach. Give me your heart for the ones we got. Give me your eyes so I can see. Yeah. Thank you. 
that talk my heart to fear and grace my fear really how precious dear that grace of the eye Darkness. I will call your name. 
shaking their heads yes, right? John Lodgen just responded yes. Miss Sylvia's talking to me, doesn't really realize I can't hear. But I love y'all nonetheless. I probably just messed y'all up too, I'm sorry. How's that? Moved your uh, book out of the way. You'll never find your spot again. Oh, that's now. okay. <clears throat> I hope everybody really is doing well tonight. Um, tonight I want to talk about whether or not church really is that important. Uh, before we get started, Sean, you see where the cursor for the mouse is now? Never tell you, hit that fade button for me. Fade see where the cursor for the mouse is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. Just, see Just click it when I tell you. Alright. All right. Uh, so, is church really that important? And I want to start off by telling you a little bit about myself. Um, of course, it seems like I start everything that way. I'm an open book, I think. Uh, at this point, y'all probably heard more stories about me than you need to, but I'm going to tell you another one. Uh, in high school, I played a little bit of football, Now I wasn't an all-star player, but I enjoyed the game. I loved the game. It's something I enjoyed doing. Uh, Elijah's following in my footsteps, I guess. He really seems to enjoy it. Now, we weren't the world's greatest team, but we had a good coach, uh, Coach Gary Glass. Uh, the thing is, he really carried, cared about his boys. Uh, and he didn't just so much care about us winning. He did inspire us to win, but he also inspired us to be better. To, to live a better life, to do better in life. In a time when prayer was being removed from schools, he made sure that we still had it. Before every game, before and after every game, uh, and practice, we knelt down and we prayed. Uh, sometimes it was just the Lord's Prayer, sometimes the coaches led, sometimes <coughs> the players led. Just depended on what was going on that day. None of our coaches, none of our players ever excluded themselves. No one ever objected. No one ever objected to the prayer. For just a moment, we were all equals assembled together as a church. Now, church is defined Matthew 18, 20, in my opinion. Uh, when two or three are gathered together, I'm in your midst. That's Matthew 18, 20. My opinion is when two or three are gathered, that's where church is. Four of us are here, so I guess we're a little over that. We're church. A little, a little more church. Um, but yeah, in our opinion, my opinion, this is church. No matter how many are assembled, even if you're not here with us, this is church, and I feel like it's incredibly important. In high school, for some of those guys that knelt, prayed, some of those guys that would never set foot in a church, they found themselves in the presence of God, whether they realized it or not. So my school wasn't unique in this. Get that. My school wasn't unique in this. Uh, many teams across America do the exact same thing. Get it? What's this, I mean, what's this supposed to do? It's supposed to start playing a, another slideshow on the other screen on the right-hand side. I, I've got a fader that I'm... The uh, audio fader that I'm clicking on. In the middle of the screen, you'll see a button that says fade. I must have moved. Oh, I did move it to yeah, turn audio back up. My, my bad. It wouldn't be church on Bowling Circle if everything went right, right? You got it now? I clicked on the fade in the middle. You wish to speak to the people while you go do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay. You want to transition? No, that's, that's, good. that's why I was like, you were crazy. It's on the audio. Alright, I've always wanted my opportunity as a pastorship, so here we go right now. We are going to turn. I'm going to keep his spot there. We're going to read. This is Matthew 6, 25. 
And the title of this little section here is called Do Not Worry. <coughs> Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not the life <coughs> is not life more than food? I can't even see. The body. And the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to its stature? By the way, this wasn't my fault. I just want to write down See, that. even the birds out there, they're not working, they're not sowing, they're not reaping. <laughs> He's taking care of them. He will take care of all of us. We just have to trust in him. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Brad. Thank you, Brother John. Yes. Technical difficulties. We're still work, working out the kinks here. And I hope, I hope this gave everybody a good laugh. I'm sure it did. Uh, so our right church, now, our church typically gives people a good laugh. Right now, there should be some pictures playing as a slideshow on your screen, but they are not. Um, it's just a couple of pictures of uh, one of them is Elijah's football team kneeling. There's a couple of different football teams and a couple of different churches. Um, help drive the point home, but you'll have to look them up online later. Just search for kneeling people. You'll be all right. No, um, so my school wasn't unique in this. Many teams did the exact same thing. Uh, a lot of teams after a game would kneel and pray with the other team as a show of sportsmanship. Uh, it's also not limited to sports. Many Americans are gathered together in God's presence. We never know what lifelong impact this short church had or may have had on those involved. So what benefit is this to us? Why do we have church? Church. Church. It's an opportunity for the spirit to work in their lives, for people to give thanks, worship, <coughs> opportunity to be, be to be blessed, to bless others, to learn, to grow. There's lots of reasons for us to have church. There's lots of reasons not to stop. So why is it so important that we continue <coughs> to have church right now? Well, today I want to share with you three reasons why the church is so important right now, and more important than it ever has been. Hebrews 10, 20, 23 through 25 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. <clears throat> Verse 25 says, Not giving up meeting together. That's absolutely what we're still doing. It's definitely a little bit different. I'm staring at three people here in this room. We're well under the 10 people mark, but are still are we not still having church? How many of you joined the church this morning in your pajamas? Junior? All right. I was here. How many of you are still in your pajamas? So I saw a story online the other day. It said department stores are selling three times as many shirts right now as they are pants. Reason for this, I guess if you're teleworking and nobody can see your pants, why splurge on something new or something nice? Mm -hmm. Just wear something nice from the waist up. Mm -hmm. um, there's no motivation to, to dress any nicer. There's no, uh, there's no motivation to dress any nicer if you won't be seen. When no one else is there to see your actions, we lack the motivation to do better. That's not so much about doing, doing wrong, but what I'm talking to you tonight about is motivation and encouraging. That's one of the main, or one of the three reasons I feel like we still need to have church and why it's so important. <clears throat> we need to be encouraging each other right now. We need to be motivating each other to do, to go. Well, maybe not to go, but to do. Uh, have you checked on your friends? I'm sure you saw a meme. If you don't know what a meme is, it's a, a picture with a funny saying on it. Uh, I'm sure you saw a meme or a funny picture lately that said to check on your blank friends. We're not okay. Or we're not, oh, not okay right now. Um, there's a lot of people that aren't handling this well. But have you really checked on your friends? Even if they don't fall into one of those categories? And much harder, have you checked on someone that you don't like as much? Maybe they're not a friend, they're an acquaintance, but it's somebody that <coughs> relies on you, that comes to you for advice or for guidance. It's really easy for us to be discouraged, really easy. And we're not alone in this. Anybody can be discouraged. In fact, John the Baptist was discouraged when he was in prison. See, John had enough courage to stand before Herod and rebuke his adultery. 
But his imprisonment so discouraged him that he began to doubt Jesus. So John the Baptist sent his disciples to ask Jesus. He said, are you the one to come or should we look for another? I had a friend the other day tell me that they felt like they were in prison right now. The only thing they can do is sit around their house and sometimes go out in the yard. It's easy for us to be discouraged, to feel like we're in the exact same boat. But we as a church should be encouraging each other, lifting each other up, and helping one another. We should be one another's motivation. <coughs> that's one of the reasons I feel church is just so important right now. No matter what way you're joining a church or tuning in, it's incredibly important. So, if we're making the best of the situation, if we're taking the time to truly make the best of things, spend time with your family, whether physically or virtually. Send them a text. Um, if you're a little more text savvy than your grandparents or parents, send them a video. Let them see pictures of you, of your kids, their grandchildren, um, or just of your dog. I don't know. A lot of people love their dogs as much as they do kids. Whatever the case may be, I feel like it's very important that we still connect with one another whether virtually or physically. I'm blessed in that where I work at, my kids are home with me all the time now. I know not everybody looks at that as a blessing, but, but I truly am. I'm blessed that my kids are there with me and I'm being able to enjoy this time to reconnect with them. Um, study your Bible, take time to pray. And if you can get outside and get some fresh air, do so. I'm not talking about going to drive around town or, or walking down the street. Your porch, your backyard, open a window. It'll be so much better for you and make you feel so much better. Uh, just to get out of the house and reconnect with something else. Uh, so we understand that church is important so that we can encourage and motivate one another. Now let's talk about how church allows us to love and fellowship with each other. Now I know what you're thinking, fellowship. We can't really fellowship right now. Well, certainly we can. We're still fellowshipping now. It looks different. It feels different. It's not the same, but it is the same. We still get to connect and fellowship with one another. 2 Corinthians 1.4 says, Who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. See, we're able to comfort one another with God's comfort. Together we can share our victories as well as our defeats. For me, one of the worst consequences of this virus is not being able to fellowship like we normally would. Until Friday... It never crossed my mind that this virus might keep us from being able to comfort our friends in their time of need. Um, if, if you know me, I'm a loving person. It hit home real hard that driving home from the lake, I couldn't do anything to help anybody. I felt helpless. But how great is it? How great is it to hear about and see that our family, our church family, is still doing anything and everything it can to love on each other when we're in need? going above and beyond what might be expected. Now, has this hurdle stopped us from being able to fellowship? No. See, it's changed how we fellowship, and it's definitely maybe not quite as enjoyable, but it's still the same. We're still able to fellowship, to gather together, to love each other. But I've seen so many new people on social media here lately, uh, people that have intentionally stayed away from new technology, uh, now they embrace it as a way to connect with their friends, with their loved ones, with their family. Tens of thousands of new churches have started sharing their services, their devotions, their Bible studies, all online in hopes of reaching people that can't get out and can't get any other way. We as a church, a church body, this assembly of believers need to commit to letting everyone know that we love them And we're here for them. Even if it seems like we're distant, we're still here for them. So the church is important because we need to fellowship. we got to love each other. But lastly tonight, I want us to talk and understand that the church needs to share God's love with everyone. Those that are in need the most. 1 John 4, 7-8 says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. A little tongue twister, right? First time I read it, it wasn't that easy to understand. Um, the fact is, the very last three words in that sentence, God is love, 
to love, to truly love, we must first know God. Love starts with God and ends with God because God is love. All God does is out of love. Sometimes we don't understand it, but it is. He cannot and does not do wrong. His display of love is the purest and the truest that there is. We're not talking a little puppy love that you and your girlfriend had. <coughs> the truest form is God's love for us. He loves perfectly. And because we're made in his image, we're able to love too. See, love isn't something that comes from inside of us. It's radical. It's supernatural. But the kind of love that God calls us to, the love that loves our neighbors just as much as we love ourselves, that has to come from him. We can't love like that without first being born of God. And if we know God's love, then we can share God's love. And if you know God's love, you know the joy of God. John 3.16 is probably the one verse I think everybody's heard all their life. Uh, but still, it, I feel like it means a lot to, and should mean a lot to every person. It means a lot to me. Uh, for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. God made that sacrifice for me. That's the kind of love that he has. That is God's love. Romans 5.8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still broken, while we were still imperfect, while we were still lost, Christ died for us to be the propitiation for our sins. Now, if you don't know God's love, if you're watching this message tonight, tomorrow, whenever, and you don't know God's love, you can. And there's not some great mysterious thing you've got to do. It's a choice that you can make right now. All you have to do is pray to God and admit that you're a sinner. <clears throat> Believe that Jesus is God's son sent to die on the cross for your sins. For atonement. And then commit to living a new life in Christ. If you choose to accept this free gift of salvation that God has given to every person, please let us know. Let your normal church know <coughs> where you normally attend. Uh, let a Christian brother or sister know. Just connect with a church, whether it's here or another one. We want you in a church, connected with a church, so that you can grow, so that you can be ministered to. Now we, God's church, whether you're in Enterprise, Alabama, or on the other side of the world, we have to be the ones telling the world about God and that he offers this salvation, this free gift. So as the guys come forward tonight to lead us in a song of praise, I want you to know something. The entire country is experiencing something new to each one of us. Everywhere you look, people are voicing their own opinions, ranging from denial that the virus is dangerous, total panic, and even government conspiracies. You'll find it no matter where you turn. In most of our lives, there's never been a time that the church was needed more than right now. If you're listening to this, know Christ, you are a part of that church and we need you. See, we have to encourage and lift up one another. We have to fellowship and love each other. Most importantly, we have to spread God's love. And tell others about it. We need to tell them about the sacrifice that he's made for us. I want you to understand one thing right now. One thing only. God loves you. This church loves you. And we're patiently waiting. Maybe not patiently. Some of us are stir crazy. But we are waiting. Eagerly waiting to help you in your journey. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, this night, that we can come together, that we can serve you and worship you. Father God, I pray that if there's any person, any one person under the sound of my voice, Lord, that's listening to this message, whether it's here or across the world, Lord God, we pray that you would lean into their hearts and in their lives. Father, just lead and guide them with the Spirit work and speak in their hearts. Father, we thank you. We thank you so much for the blessings you've given each one of us. Because, Lord, even when, even when we feel we're so alone, Father, you're there. Your church is there. Lord, we're here. 
we're all ready to reach out and help one another no matter what the cost. Father God, we thank you again for this night, this time that we've had, Lord, and we pray that all this craziness would just be over soon, and Father, we could come back together and assemble as your church body. Father God, I love you, I praise you, and I pray for each person that's listening, Lord, if there's a decision made, that Lord God, they would connect with a church, connect with somebody that can disciple them and help them. Father, we thank you so much. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. The love of God is greater far than the Lord could ever tell. Is to the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pain bowed down with care. God sent his son to church we appreciate you tuning in i hope church. You, i hope you enjoyed it i hope you took something away from the message brad brad shared with us and possibly the worship too um just remember those in uh prayer that we mentioned tonight especially uh the family in our church family that's um you know mourning and hurting so bad um we love all you guys we can't wait to have everybody back and us not be playing to an empty room because it's kind of awkward <laughs> Um, we love you guys. We can't wait to see y'all back. Me and Dr. Granger talking this morning. I think that the first Sunday back, the church is going to be um, busting at the seams. So, But um, thanks for uh, tuning in. We will be live Wednesday night at 6. six. We will be live again Sunday, next Sunday morning for Easter service. And drive in church. Yeah. If you want to do that, I was about to do that. We can do you it. Can do it. Oh, okay. I'll just Okay, we're going to have drive-in church. We tried to do this couple week, or last week, and we heard from the city that we probably shouldn't. But next Sunday night, um, we are going to do drive-in church. We're going to come and park in the parking lot, and we're going to set our stuff up on the porch, and we're going to have um, service together. I think it's amazing that we're actually going to be able to meet together as a church in some way on Easter. Blinker so. one direction is a hand raised. Blinker <laughs> the other direction, right hand raised. Emergency flashers, both hands up. And squirt a windshield and wiper fluid means you want to be baptized. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all have a good week, and be looking for the information about um, the the driving past the house here in, in the next few hours, hopefully.